Doodle Bud, and today we're going to compare the Parker 51 and the Jinhao 51A. So I thought I'd do this video. I've already done a full review on the Parker 51. This is actually the Parker 51 special. Um, and I bought this guy a while ago, the Jinhao 51A, mainly just out of curiosity. Um, I went to do this review, but I couldn't find this pen. I lost it. I couldn't find it forever. Then it hit me the other day that I haven't used it for so long since about, oh, I don't know, March and something happened around then. And I actually, I had this in a presentation binder when I would see clients. I was playing around with it and I haven't used it since then because I've been looking at everyone through Zoom. So I thought about that. I go, I bet that's where it is. That's why I can't find it. And that's right where it was. So let's do this. It's an interesting comparison. No one is going to get confused which is which. Um, but I thought if you're curious about maybe getting a Parker 51, which is a fantastic pen, and just aren't sure if it's for you, pick this guy up because it'll give you a little bit of an idea. And I think that's really what these, you know, uh, air quotes, knockoff pens are for. Again, if you think you're getting this gorgeous, you know, vintage pen that's been around forever, that's an icon that you can get the exact same thing for five or six bucks or whatever the heck this thing was, then you deserve to get ripped off, I guess. It's, you, there shouldn't be any confusion. This is, you know, an imitation. But I guess one thing I'm going to show you, it serves as maybe a good pen if you don't want to drop 100 or $200 for a nice one and just aren't sure about the size or the feel. Get this thing for a few bucks, and then you'll decide, do I want to get the real deal? So let's run through it. So as far as size goes, this thing is so darn close. Like lengthwise, it's like pretty much identical. If we take off the cap, you know, we got the uh, the hooded nibs, of course. You know, even the collar for catching the uh, the cap. You know, you can see it's a little more hooded on the Parker versus the Jin Hao. Um, you can see the threads there. This has got cartridge converter. I'll show you that in a second. But all in all, this sucker is identical as far as dimensions. It does not have the little hole in the back. This one doesn't need it. Take them apart. Here, this is the aerometric. Nice threads. This is cartridge converter. And terrible threads. Let's see if you can see what's going on there. Do you see that residue on those threads? The stuff that's filling in right in there and all throughout? That is some of this material. I've said it many times. Plastic versus metal. Metal wins. So you got to be so careful with this stuff. And if you're going to do metal on plastic, you have to pick the proper uh, thread pitch. Right, you got to made it properly because this is way too sharp and aggressive. Like, look at those threads. They should be nowhere near plastic unless you want to destroy the plastic. You know, on the Parker, they have really nice, they have a fine thread, which is what you should be doing for this. And that's the reason why this pen is mega old and still in fantastic condition in the threads, even how it stops, it just, right there, it clicks. It's just, it's perfect. Here, just how it's designed, you can, I'm going to put this up to the mic so you can hear this. It shouldn't sound like that. <laughs> it's cutting the material, which it is. But yeah, even the material, when you tighten it, it's, it should just stop. You can, you can go a little bit more, just the springiness of the material. And it's just it's because the teeth are cutting into the metal. So anyways, that's my gripe about threads. Been an engineer for a number of years, and that's a major deal when you're making stuff. Uh, caps are, are different with uh, what they're doing here. This is kind of brushed. This is more polished. They got the ball. This is the classic Parker, uh, but the ends are kind of similar. You know, I don't think, I'm curious if one of the jewels could fit in there, but I wouldn't waste your time doing that. But uh, yeah, you can take the Jin Hell cap and pop it perfectly on the Parker 51. And same thing here as well. So when I say the dimensions are perfect, <laughs> they are. They did a very good job in ripping it off. Um, but even how the Parker cap feels and the Jin Hao feels way better. Uh, so the, the cap, how it works too, you can't feel this, but it just, it feels terrible, uh, how it engages, um, 
Oh, yeah, well, I don't have proper lighting for there, but the spring mechanism they used in the cap to grab onto this just is not really good at all. Um, you can already see um, I don't know how the light works, but you can see lots of rough work and scratches on that band versus, again, this thing's super old. I get some focus, and, uh, you know, there's no gouging on it. So those are just little things. When you go to make a quality product that's going to be used a lot, uh, same thing with burrs. Lots of burrs on this here that should never go out the door, but for the price, that's stuff that gets skipped on here. Uh, nice and smooth, even the corners when they bend the clip, that's nicely rounded. These ones are, you know, kind of pokey a little bit too. So uh, there'd be, you know, as soon as you, yeah, just even how you put it on, it feels terrible. Um, the second you grab something, you can tell right away which one's nicer and which one's made better you know, instantly you can feel it. So that's a quick go around on the pen, how it's made, the workings of it. We're going to do a writing sample up next. Let's do the weight. You're going to get a kick out of this one. Okay, here we are. So to make things really accurate, let's see how they did with their weight. Here's a Parker 51. They're both empty. So 20 and a quarter grams. What do you think? Damn, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good quality control on their end. So they weigh the same. Uh, the body on the Jinhao is one gram lighter than the body on the Parker. And so the extra weight is just made up in the cap. So the pens are inked and ready to go. I thought before I do that, since we're talking about threads, really quickly, I mentioned this when I did the full review on this pen, but this is my Leonardo Memento Zero, and I talked about it too. So even on here, lovely pen, well-made, but I do feel there is a goof on these threads too. You can see, let me go to the mic. You can hear this. So that's just not the right sound. And you can see all that dust on those threads. And this is why I don't like to use the blind cap on this one, is this material here. So there's something to be said, and you can just see those threads don't look fantastic. Um, so there's something to be said about having the right threads and doing a good job when you make something and just a, attention to little details like that because, you know, they do have a stop here, which is good, but, you know, how will those threads hold up 50 years, 60, 70, 80 years later, especially if it's something you're using all the time versus on this guy, these threads are in fantastic shape. So there's something to be said for attention to detail on little things like that. All right, enough about that. Let's get to writing. So who should go? Let's put the Jinhao first. They both have Robert Oster, uh, Fire and Ice. I know you should only use like Parker ink on the Parker pens. I don't leave it in there for that long, but I like to use my inks on my pens and play around. There's some I won't. I wouldn't use like a glitter ink or nothing like that in there, but I can wash that stuff up pretty well. So here we are. This is the Jinhao. Uh, 51A. I do find it bold. They just went right out of the gate with that and just slapped an A at the end to make it different so you don't confuse the two. You know, I whatever. But uh, it's kind of a bold move. But it is, it is so much of a clone. This, uh, you know, is a fine nib. It's steel as well. Uh, you know, wetness. Let's, let's do a sample, then I'll go try to go close up. It writes okay. So that's why, you know, I kind of mentioned before, this might just be, if you're considering getting a nice Parker 51 and don't want to shell out the cash, they're not crazy expensive. I mean, this is a lower end one. This is a special. I got this for um, I got it from someone I knew. I got to try it out first. He serviced it, so I knew exactly what I was getting from someone I can get a hold of if he was messing me around, which I know he wasn't. But um, so I got it for 120 bucks Canadian. Um, you know, and there's ones that can be way more expensive if you get the gold nib and rare colors and this, that, and the other. You know, this one's six dollars Canadian. So if you're apprehensive about maybe getting this, you want to get one but aren't sure yet you know what the heck pick one of these up try it out and then you'll get the general idea of what the pins like not the full experience obviously so we got the parker 51 
I just cleaned the uh, cap out because I forgot to wipe the nib properly and I got ink all over my hands and went in the cap. And If you're wondering where the water's from. So this is the Parker. Whoops. Parker. 51. This is a special. And this is the same type of thing. They're fine nib. You would call it a fine. Maybe, you know, some of them may be like a fine medium on some of them as well. But generally, they're all a fine. And, you know, it's much smoother. It's got great flow. You know, the wetness in it, like, let's get it close here, but, you know, it's pretty close. <laughs> if you were a penologist and was given a writing sample and you uh, were told to decipher which one was which and you weren't sure, um, you know, pretty darn close, folks. But uh, that's not the point. You know, like I said, I don't think you're going to get confused about which one is which. But uh, it does serve a purpose. You know, some people get really angry when they see clone pens. I mean, I, I get angry if, if, they would, if they were trying to sell this under the name Parker 51. Then that would just be absolutely ridiculous. But it's not. They're calling it a Jin Hao. And, uh, yep, it's a, you know, a, a ripoff on design-wise. But for six bucks, what do you expect? <laughs> uh, but it serves its purpose. It's an all right pen. You know, maybe you like, maybe you have some 50 ones and you take care of them and maintain them and which you should. This is what's cool is, you know, I'm hoping that when I'm gone, this is still operational and is passed on with my other pens. That this thing would be crazy old and still writing. And that's, you know, this thing just, you pick it up, it writes all the time. Um, so, but maybe you have some 50 ones and you like them so much. Um, and you take care of them, but this, so this is maybe your uh, glove box 51, right? So this is the one you just keep in your car, or it gets bashed around or whatever, or if you lose it or break it, um, you don't care, you know, you would use it in areas you wouldn't use your nice 51. So yeah, just click this one in your glove box or in your pocket of your pants or wherever. And if it lasts a while, it lasts. If it doesn't, it was six bucks, who cares? But, you know, but maybe the point is you just love your 51 so much, you'd like to use it everywhere, but there's some areas you would never use your Parker 51. Get one of those. So there you go. 51 versus 51A. Obviously, this is a much better pen. But for six bucks, this gives you a feel of what it's like if you're curious about getting one. Or like I said, if you got a bunch and you want to have one just to kick around with, you can grab one of those as well. Hope you'd enjoyed it. Comments. I love them. I love going through the comments. It's fun to see. And, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up and some subscriptions. It helps me out. Thanks so much.